Okay, and looks like we are live. So, uh, we're going to be streaming the top eight match today between Arwell and Adam. Arwell got here sort of by the skin of his teeth, to be honest. Um, he went 3 2 in Swiss. Uh, his last, he had to go 4 2 to cut. His last round opponent. Uh, are they already there? No. His last round opponent. Um, conceded to him to give him the, uh, the the play into the cut and then he managed to get a bye as well so uh, he hasn't played for like the last two rounds but it's against Adam now um, who uh, how did Adam do in Swiss yeah Adam went 4-2 so it uh, should be a good game uh, just gonna find out what the password is to get into the game Uh, yeah, so I'm not really sure what decks they're playing. I'm I I'm guessing our oh, well, uh, he's either going to be on Charge Bird or Seeker Void, boring old good stuff, which is basically what I've been playing. Um, Adam, well, we'll see, I guess. Uh, Adam is on the open hand Seeker of Earth. It's interesting. So uh, no backhanded compliments to worry about. Uh, and yeah, IMS, Seeker of Void, so Arwell's just on the good stuff deck. Uh, I'll be honest, since the new RL, I haven't kept up to date with what Scorpion are doing, so I don't know if this is a Dishonor deck just without the backhanded compliments, or if this is something else going on. Uh, I did sign up to the next season of this league with Scorpion, mainly because I have no idea what to do with them. Probably just play Forgery and a good deck. I'm I'm guessing he's on a uh, Earth Becomes Sky Splash. But I don't know what Seeker specific cards he's, uh, he's running that are better than Backhanded Compliment. We have here Shadow Stalker. Take care. Looks like he's on a bit of a bit of a shinobi thing, or he's or he's just trying out things. I I know Adam said he didn't really know how he was playing. Uh, this two fate signals that he's a hundred percent dropping a Miyako. You wouldn't two fate that otherwise. But I don't really I don't like high fating Miyako anyway because. You're going to be running two, probably. Uh, maybe three, probably two. So if you're running two Miyako, you drop one in. Uh, you can't drop another one in until the first one's gone. So having him stuck around for ages is is not ideal, because you can end up with another Miyako dead in hand. And it's after you've triggered his ability, it's just a useless three-two. Like, not useless, but uh, not so great. We had some seasonal wars firing off. Uh, I mean, I think you buy the Dreamer here, actually. And if he's happy to just buy a student of the tower with, like, three fate on it, then I don't know why I just didn't buy in the first place. Like, I'm not sure what the, the point of the Seasonal War was. Like, it got rid of some storehouses, but he didn't really care what else was on those provinces, I don't think, so... This this card is done, the Shadow Stalker, 2 cost, 4-2. Um, 
So Chusika runs into Sampuku Saido, which uh, the student is opposing. Makes sense. With so many restricted cards now, I don't even know if City is the right stronghold for Scorpion. Like, the stronghold is still broken. Broken as fuck. Um, so, uh, dishonors the student there. Not bad. It, it doesn't help him break this, but it's useful for everywhere else, I guess. The problem with this being restricted is you just... You signal that you don't have any of the other restricted cards. Um. Oh, there we go. Drops a studious. Gets immediately bowed. And, uh, province broken. He has no fate, so he's not doing anything else this turn either. So, that was a pretty bad first turn for our well there. Uh, especially if the Sedako is able to come break another province. See, I'd have rather seen, instead of two fate on this guy, put some fate on the Sedako. Like, th that glory is really, really valuable in this matchup. Because it lets you, in later turns, just, just stand her back and it just snipes a favour away from Phoenix. I always hate this. When, when a Sedako attacks my shameful displays, uh, it's horrible. Uh, the student in the tower just sends that Tadaka home, which is fine. Um, but yeah, because you want to defend, but the, the Shameful is useless against the Tadaka because you're actually buffing it. Um, it's only any good. Uh, I've used it before to honour the Tadaka and dishonour someone else to get the Tadaka away from dishonoured status, but otherwise it, it's just painful. Uh, student in the tower pretty useful there. And he does have a fate now, so if he if he has an against the waves, he could go for something. But I think that'd be suicide here. What does this guy do? In conflict, in which is kind of character participate. Put a card from the discard pile on top of the deck. It's imperial, which is probably the only thing it's got going for it, because it's pretty bad. I think. Like, that's an annoying ability, especially if you're, like, against someone with let go, because you just keep putting their let go back and laughing at them. But it's a two cost 1 2 2 in Scorpion. I wonder if he's on. He's got a couple Imperial cards here, so he, I, I reckon he's probably on Castigated. But I don't think Adam really knows what he's on. Alright, sorry. I don't think Adam really knows what exactly he's doing with Scorpion, so I think he's probably trying a few things. Yeah, more Imperial cards coming out. Oh yeah, he's definitely on Castigated, because Core showed you. Uh, Lost Papers bows down the student of the Tau, who is not having a good day. I think the only player is you buy the Dreamer and hope your hand does something good, because Eugenia's not very useful. Um, buying another student, I, sure, like, he's just throwing all his fate on this Eugenia. I don't think... I don't know what's in his hand. I don't think this is very good here. I don't think, like... A three glory guy against Scorpion is, is horrible in general. Like, it's going to save his provinces, but. You know. Whatever, I guess. Scorp it's, it's not likely that Scorpion are going for the. Well, they could be going for the break, actually, because they might not be a Dishonor deck. I'm wondering if he's just. Uh oh, look, more province cancelling. I wonder if he's going for a sort of military control deck, so the Imperial stuff with Castigated. And um, just using the stronghold as, you know, for the broken resource uh, generation it is. It's hard. I normally know what I'm talking about, but either I don't know what I'm talking about or Adam is trying some weird stuff. So uh, this Eugenia is pretty poor. 
Especially with only two fate late. Just gonna send him in for void. And hopefully I I assume probably void the curse catcher and remove it from the game, but uh Effective Deception can cancel Eugenia's trigger if he wants it to. Uh, oh, it can't if he just lets it break, because it'll be broken. Uh, it'll be broken before the ring, uh, before the ring effect, or before the ring is claimed, and before the ring effect, in fact. Uh, so compelling testimonies of Gina. Uh, there is a good chance he's just gonna slam down a castigated at this point. Yeah, so um, if he has a way of dishonoring him, then Arwell really needs to uh, really needs a court games here. Oh, he can favorable ground home. Uh, which, if he can't honor Ugina right now, he needs to favorable grounds out, or Ugina is dead. If you can't gain force pump, going home's the right option anyway, because zero zero is the same. It's the difference between a bowed guy or a, a standing guy. But I was taking quite a while here, and I yeah. So he's going home. He's going to not get castigated. Uh, except, yeah, he's an effective deception, isn't he? So uh. So long, Ugina. And that's another reason putting too much fate on guys against Scorpion, uh, who are clearly on the Imperial deck, probably isn't the best idea. Especially just high glory, dies to compelling testimony sort of things. Yeah. I think Arwell's in a lot, 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 lot of trouble now. He's got some fate, but he just had seven fate killed out from under him. Boom. Uh, so he plays an ancient master in. Uh, I think he's just trying to get some kind of uh, some kind of value here. I don't think I like this because. Oh, <laughs> Master gets immediately assassinated. Um, that's one reason I didn't like it, but the other reason is uh, the Ancient Master actually defends Shameful pretty well. Uh, I don't think he would attack Shameful, but if he did, the Master defends it. Um, oh, he plays another one in. But he's just spent... So he's lost eight fate worth of characters this turn. Um, the seven fate Gina and the one fate guy here. And all he's done is taken a void off the, the truth seeker, who I don't think is even the right choice because Curse Catcher uh, blanks Curry Murray here. It blanks what I assume is upholding authority here. He's probably not attacking Shameful anyway. This is the sort of spot as Phoenix, I think you probably... If I was just playing like a test game with a friend or like a casual game, I'd probably just, just throw in the towel there and just say, all right, yeah, cool, we're done, let's GG next. Uh, I don't know why he took the fate off the, the Truth Seeker. Like, yeah, he's a bit bigger, but he, he's given... Scorp Scorpion cards are better than Phoenix cards because Scorpion cards are better than everyone's cards. So getting Scorpion to their cards faster is is kind of bad. And Curse Catcher is going to keep that Kuru Murray blank because Curse Catcher doesn't even have to be at the uh, province. I've just noticed. So student could send him home, and it doesn't matter. Oh 
I don't know what um what RL card Arwell's on. If he's on display, which he could be, then I mean this still isn't good, but the the other options consumed and like the gentleman's agreement in this league is don't be a dick and tailor your deck for your opponent, but um at the same time I don't think I would even put consumed in my deck against Scorpion. I just swap it for display, like sure whatever. And if Adam wins, then it's going to be a, a Crab Scorpion top four. Uh, I beat Dario over here. So I'll be facing... I don't know who I'll be facing. My prediction is Steven. Uh, he hasn't lost a game, uh, and I lost him in Swiss, so... I think he's on some weird Crab deck as well. So, Owl is just sort of sitting there, stalling for time, I guess. There's no time for you to stall, Owl. He's probably deciding whether to use the... Like, I think you use the student, send home the set... The use the student, send home the Truth Seeker. I don't think that's the right one. I think you send home the Truth Seeker, force Scorpion to play something to break it. If Scorpion can't break it, then they come back on a military with a one strength Truth Seeker. Um, I think that's the better option. Like, clouding this curse catcher is. whatever. I hope he's got another cloud, because cloud and curse catcher when there's a, a, a Saturi and a Shoju sat right here with the scorpion sat on six fate. Not super great. Uh, we'll see the Banzai come out on the curse catcher. Which will... Uh, oh, So he does two to the curse catcher, two to the truth seeker, which is the right choice. Uh, so, student the Tau sends home the Curse Catcher, but he's still got three strength here with the, the Truth Seeker. But also now he doesn't have... Oh, there's a Tessin to uh, be breaking. He also doesn't have Kurumuri or Student for when the Curse Catcher swings on his military conflict. Uh, so he let goes the Tessin. Yeah, I think that's probably a good choice anyway. Like, if the if he's attaching a Tessin for the plus military, then like odds are he doesn't have any other way of gaining military. Yeah, so uh, Adam passes there, so it's just three nil. So he's not going to break, but he is going to uh, honor the curse catcher. Apparently, seems fine. And then he's got a three strength military and oh well doesn't have the student or the curry murray now. He could actually he's three strength, so he could just re I reckon he can run into the shameful here and just go break that instead. Because a safe bet Arwell doesn't have much going on here based on the way he's been playing. Um, so you run the Curse Catcher, break the Shameful, worry about the Curry Murray some other time. You're not running backhanded, so you could actually, if you're trying to break, you could go break the uh, Upholding Authority next turn. Um, the Dishonor is much, much less scary without. Um,
If Sophie Banzai both times on this and he got sent home, then the Truth Seeker could attack Shameful, but it's only a one strength attack at that point. So I think spreading it was better with the Banzai. I'm interested how Adam attacks here. Like, I, th I think the obvious choice is to run into Shameful, but um, <laughs> and there's pack four forgery. You don't need forge edict when you can just cancel it anyway. It's pretty good. I'm not sure why he's against the waves in this guy anyway. He's not. Oh uh, well, I guess it stops the shameful attack, right? But if if he stands successfully, then uh, Adam just runs into Curry Murray or UA. Five cards in hand. I don't think he cares about UA much. Uh, he could farm it, but without backhanded compliment pressure, I'm not too worried about losing um, losing little chips of honor because you're not just dead at four anymore or dead at five. Yeah, yeah, that f yeah, um, Gomsh, that first attack was Paul. It just got swapped with um, Curry Murray to Mill. Phoenix in a pretty big hole here. He's down cards. He's down fate. He's effectively down honor with one city trigger. He's down provinces. can gain a bit of honor this turn if he can uh, win a thing. Uh, Scholar and Shrine, he's got uh, Inferno Guard Invoker is good, but is also like his whole turn's investment. Uh, what does Adam have here? Thunder Guard Elite. Pride on a nice Zero Glory character uh, to just make them discard at random. <laughs> Loose one honor isn't a cost on that. That guy just says make them. In fact, it, it's a cost for your opponent with City, obviously. So, um, yeah. So gets another Imperial guy out. So there's the threat of cast gated again. And yeah, oh well. Decides buying this guy's too expensive. Maybe, hopefully, he's got um, Tadaka in hand or something. Uh, so Adam keeps bidding five because he's playing City. Uh, oh well, actually dropped his bid a bit there, so saves a bit of honor. But at this point, I mean, he's that like Adam can just go break a. He can definitely break one province this turn. And I think I would. He's got thirteen cards in hand now. I still think I would jam my guys here into um uphold an authority. Both players are sitting on a bank of fate now. So, Adam's just gonna swing in for air because it's got money, and the other money ring is blank. Uh, he does go for the uphold and authority. I don't think he's worried about it. Uh, I think he should be worried about having left his non-fated guy home because this is 
the strongholds retire to the Brotherhood. So if he breaks this and then he swings to the stronghold, his attack's just gonna fall off. I think I'd have pushed these two guys in there so that if you get the break, um, then you can actually still threaten the stronghold. But the other option is just forcing the stronghold to trigger this turn. He's still got a huge bank of fate, and then next turn, Jamin showed you into play uh, alongside this Thunderguard elite and just, just breaking a blank province at that point. So Arwell's thinking a bit here. Looks like he's going to put Student the Tau in the way. Or he's thinking about putting Student the Tau in the way. Uh, for that mad zero skill block. I assume he's got some supernatural storms or banzais or something going on here. But actually, Supernatural Storm would only put him to zero strength anyway. So, discard Study the Natural World at random from the Thunder Guard Elite. I really like that card. It's expensive, and I'm still torn as to whether I want it in my uh, in my Phoenix decks. But if you have the fate, it like it feels like a win more because I tend to only trigger it when when I'm winning. Like, I've got the spare fate and I'm about to win an attack. Like, I don't think that's great. So he plays a fine katana to bring his strength up back up to zero from negative two. Uh, oh, so Palace Guard steals the cloud off of Curse Catcher, uh, which will allow Adam to just cancel the Uphold and Authority if he wants, because Lions two cost needs to be in the conflict. Adam plays a perfect cut, which is a really weird card for a scorpion deck. But anyway, yeah. Cranes needs to be attacking alone. Uh, Lions just needs to be there, but uh, that's all. Uh, scorpions just needs to exist, because that, that's how scorpions do things. Uh, Supernatural Storm takes him up to two strength. So he is stopping it breaking right now. But like, if you're Scorpion, I think you're happy. If your opponent's having to throw... Your opponent's already on a card disadvantage. If they're having to th fling cards into defending and upholding an authority from breaking, you're in a pretty good spot. <laughs> they're calling on Cloud's actually pretty funny because uh, not only does he get his curse catcher, but he removes the uh, the downside of the Palace Guard's text box. Not that he's under threat of that at the moment anyway, but... Uh, so imbued with shadows. Just to get rid of that. To gain one strength. Uh, so Arwell now throws a Banzai down. Which means he's now actually winning on the defense, so he could be getting a card draw from Studius. There's no uh, Courtier attacking, so he's not a, not a risk of being uh, for shamed. Uh, oh, so he noble sacrifices. Sorry, I was looking at another window then. Uh, noble sacrifices just kill off that student of the towels. He's breaking again, uh, but he is going to eat the uphold and authority now.
Yeah, Adam did come second at the UK Grand Championships, which was um, quite a lot of attendees, actually. Uh, 87 attendees. Uh, Adam lost to Marios in the final there. Uh, so Adam is a good player. I think he's sort of inconsistent um, sometimes. But when, he, when he's playing well and he's got a good deck behind him, he is very good. Uh, so what does Apolden look at? Kachiko, uh, Compelling Testimony, Discouraged Pursuit, Two Jewel to the Deaths, A Fiery Madness, Two for Shames, and Infiltrator Tools. So Adam's deck is weird, but I like weird decks, so... Looks like it's a, it's a it's not really a dishonor deck. I think he can dishonor because he's scorpion and he's he's running city, but it's it's obviously like a a military uh, a conquest deck with using like all of scorpion's dishonor tools as a uh, control tactics. Uh, and Arwell's solemn scholar is sat here wondering, just wondering if he can. Uh, do anything. So Kachiko is discarded, which means uh, Adam has nothing left for the turn. Uh, so I mean, Arwell has a choice here, which is go military. If he goes politically, just uh. Oh no, you can play Discourage Pursuit even if you're um. Even if your shinobi isn't participating, you just have to have a shinobi to dishonor. So, uh, actually, Arwell shouldn't attack at all here, because there's both compelling testimony and discouraged pursuit to stop Solemn Scholar from having any stats. Uh, Arwell needs to sit here and just take the favor, to be honest. Uh, he's attacking into effective deception, so after Adam removes one of his stats, um, he's he's not going to be able to get it back. Oh, Adam does. Adam doesn't actually care, so Adam just passes. Um, Thunderguard Elite goes. I think I'd have been tempted to to stop that. Because he had he he could use either of his events to. Oh no, he doesn't have a um. Doesn't have a shinobi. Yeah, okay. He needs all like so his deck needs Imperials, Shinobis, Bushies, and Courtiers, I think, so far. He needs honors and dishonors, he needs to be lower honor than people. Um Yeah, I, I don't know if this is... Uh, I know Adam said ahead of time he didn't really know what he was doing with Scorpion, so I don't know if he's just thrown everything he has into a deck and, and just sees what feels good. Uh, so he gets an honor back from the Shrine, which l puts him on six. Um... I think the problem here now is the shrine is actually not so great next turn for um for Arwell. He's kept it, but as soon as Scorpion attacks his stronghold, he's probably going to lose his scholar. Uh, 12, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, or in fact, he couldn't guarantee using his scholar anyway because Dispatch was sat here. So... Owl's going to get a conflict opportunity, and then Scorpion's going to push a bunch of political stats into his face and kill him, is my assessment here. I don't think you even need Fate of Scorpion. I think you... Oh yeah, you... 
you're at risk of eating a void ring, I guess. Um, so I think you pass here. You definitely don't buy attendant. Uh, oh yeah, you probably yeah you get rid of that scholar. That seems good. Uh, which our well censures. Which still seem. I guess at this point you you just don't trigger retire. Um, which is fine. But I think he's still going to really struggle to defend this. But eh, maybe. Scholar's going to bow showed you. It might add... Yeah, no, I could, I could see a... A way this turn plays out where Scorpion can't break this. I think if I'm Scorpion here, I actually po go political with the alibi artist to force some kind of thing to happen. Then you go military with Shoju. Which feels dumb, but... Uh, if you just go political, the, the Scholar's Gumbau showed you as the first action. And then you're trying to break with an alibi artist. Uh, and he accidentally <laughs> picked water instead of earth. Um, So uh, that's the sort of that that's the sort of mistake. Like you you could tell your opponent nah, like if you want to be a dick, I guess. But that's the sort of thing you you can't even make in real life. In real life, you're not gonna go. Oh, I trigger my uh, shrine and pick water. Like eh, you might do. I I've done stupid things before. I guess. Uh, so he's going ham on this water ring with two characters. Oh, this, um, see, the scholar, I th the, he needs the scholar to defend this, I think. Which means... I don't think... I, I think he should actually have passed his conflict, because what, what happens now is he opens himself up to an assassination um, before th it ever goes this conflict. So if Adam actually has an assassination for the scholar here, then... Um, that that's it probably. So if Adam doesn't have the assassination, sure, like whatever. That is a weird choice. I guess he's decided he's going to break it next turn instead of this turn, but. That probably also means he doesn't have assassination. But that was really, really risky. Um, going for a conflict where that can get assassinated before it saves your stronghold. Uh, so it doesn't break effective deception, which means Suki does nothing, the ring does nothing. All that happened was he picked up a t bunch of fate. Uh, he really better not leave that on his uh, province this turn. What were the bids this turn? Sorry, I miss I missed the bids. Uh, so it was three to one, which is why the honor turtles are swung like this. 
but it doesn't mean forgery is is turned off. Uh, and also alibi artist is turned off. I'm not really sure why Adam bid one there, to be honest. He had an artist in ha uh, like ready to go. He had seven on her, and then he bid one, which guarantees he can't hit six on her. And then he defended uh, as well. Uh, and Adam's passed his conflict opportunity. Um, Adam should be flipping this now, so that it's blank later. I keep seeing spectators one and wondering who else is watching. It's it's literally just me. Uh, so we know Scorpion has like some duel to the deaths and stuff like uh, in hand. He's got two for shames as well. Uh, I can't be bothered to scroll up to check, but uh, to check what else. But Scorpion should have flipped back this turn. So that he can buy guys without fate next turn, uh, like when he's player one, and just go crush it. I don't understand what's happening, to be honest. Also, I'm supposed to be eating in a bit, but um, this game's going on longer than I thought it would. I'm hungry, which is a recurring theme of a lot of my streams, actually. Uh, I generally start a stream and uh, start a game and 20-30 minutes in it I'm hungry and want some food. Right, Adam should not defend this and go flip that stronghold. Uh, instead Adam's going to defend it. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not, looks like he's indecisive about the, the matter. If he wasn't going to defend this, then he should have just attack the stronghold instead of passing his first conflict opportunity because it gave not doing this gave um, Arwell the choice of ring that he wanted which in this case was fire so he uses clarity as well so there's really no difference in in the attack that Adam would make uh, this is also why I, I I like to set maybe uh, passwords that aren't easy to guess. Uh, yeah. So he finally breaks the effective deception uh, after however many turns it's been. Uh, four turns, he breaks his first, uh, first province. And Scorpion are now going to go flip this Retire to the Brotherhood, please. Yes, okay. Is Retire. I think you probably don't trigger this as Phoenix because you because he still had the Solemn Scholar trigger that he could have used. So he was better just not triggering it there. And then, like, just in case something scary happens. Like, if Adam drew another cat, oh, I can't afford a Kachiko. But he could afford, like, a Sadako and... I don't know. I don't think I'd have triggered it. I think the, the Scholar was more valuable than whatever he was going to flip. So, um, Arwell retains a favour. It actually looks like he's clawed this back a bit, but I think next turn, um, Adam bids 5 to activate his card draw. It'd be crazy not to. Uh, and, um, yeah, showed you probably the attendant to the Emperor, just, just go, and, go and go smash him. 
Uh, if Arlo keeps a secluded shrine, I'm going to yell at him after the game, so... Uh, okay, so what if we flit? We've got uh, dispatch to nowhere will be useful. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I think you dispatch probably the Suki. Just drop a no fate alibi artist, no fate attendant to the court. And then you just, just run at him with political. That's what I do as Adam. He's fating his guys because I don't know why. Um, Yeah. So Arwell has 18 fate, which means he can jam stuff into play with fate on them. Uh, but I don't think it's enough. The Inferno Guard's no good for the uh, political defense. Well, it's, I mean, it's fine, but it's a four cost too political for glory, which means against Scorpion it's just dead, because we know he's got two for shames in hand still. So it dispatches Suki. Uh, and he better bid five, because honor is irrelevant at this point. In the game. He's, he's not going to dishonor Phoenix out. Um, he's going to go crush a stronghold. It's bid 5, because uh, Arwell is forced to not bid high, right? So you bid high, and then you get two more cards, and then you have ridiculous card advantage. Uh, yep, so that's what happens. Uh, so his artists are both online as well. Uh, he's got what, 7, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 versus. Did he censure the uh, dispatch to nowhere? Yes, okay. I don't like that censure actually on the dispatch to nowhere. Um, I think he's going to lose more force to uh, in conflict effects, especially as he knows there's uh, duels to. The uh, he probably won't, can't win a duel to the death actually, but. Uh, Adam using the high skill play of not using his alibi artists. Uh, you know, just, just waiting for a cloud to come out, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, his first action in draw phase should have been using one of them. So that if there are clouds, he gets at least one. So yeah, I think you just do big, big poll here. Phoenix kind of forced to fully defend. Uh, oh, you got some covert going there with the infiltrator's tools. Uh, that probably means Eugenia's not defending. Uh, Dreamer chose air ring, so Adam just attacks Void if he wants fate. Um, So Arwell has a let go for the covert attachment. Uh, Adam's forgeries are also online, which uh, that took a bit of time to resolve. So I'm wondering, I, I reckon he's probably got a forgery in hand and he's, uh, oh, he's definitely got a forgery in hand. He's uh, deciding what he wants to use them on. How many forgeries has he used? Just one. I'm not sure what the correct number of forgeries actually is in Scorpion at the moment. It's like it's definitely two. You're probably running Sentry as well, so I'm wondering if three is too many, considering the extra condition on it. 
Uh, yeah, actually, these will be quite big storms, so I think you're right. Uh, I think you're right, Infinite Finesse. You just gotta... That, those storms are plus five apiece, so yeah, I, I would be cancelling those. Uh, how many storms have we seen? One. Yeah, 100%. Given he's only got six cards in hand, I think if you cancel the storms, you probably gonna win. And he's just sifted further through his deck as well, so. I think there is a world where Adam can't break here. I think it's unlikely that he can't, um, but it, it definitely exists. Because Phoenix can stand uh, after for Shames to get rid of that sort of downside. Um, Shoju, I guess Shoju could kill the Scholar and the Dreamer. Uh, he can dishonor stuff. Uh, so pre preplays the fan onto Regina, uh, which is an interesting choice. I think you you wait to see what the. Um, oh, I know what we still have in the Scorpion's hand. We still have a uh, a compelling testimony. Uh, odds are he's probably drawn more castigated as well, so... Yeah, Scorpion's only played one assassinate, uh, which means he can definitely assassinate again. Uh, and we've already seen all three censures from Phoenix. If they play this out to resolution, I reckon three dead Phoenix characters during the conflict. So 16 versus 15 at the moment. Yeah, I'm going to put, because you assassinate 4 to 6 strength here, um, you showed you the Dreamer dead, you showed you the Scholar dead, uh, and then actually you could like Compelling Testimony and Dishonor to Castigate Eugenia dead. So it's going to Court Games to Honor definitely the Inferno Guard. It's 4 strength which is less than a supernatural storm but it's more than a supernatural storm after he starts killing guys I don't think you caught games here actually I think you um I think you supernatural storm first while your guys are alive um cuz every guy who dies is going to nerf those storms so I think you storm a character you really want to keep alive like um Eugenia because you can't storm an assassinatable character. So you storm Regina, uh, then if he puts something onto the Inferno Guard Invoker, then you can court games him. Or you can also storm the uh, Invoker. Uh, Adam uses court games to honor Shoju. Which is a weird first choice. Showed you could be killing guys. Ah, well, then passes. I think if you showed you to kill that guy and that guy and assassinate that guy, and then as Scorpion you use court games to dishonor someone, you're in a much better spot than just just gaining two on showed you. Uh, so Gina is most likely getting castigated here. And this is why you have to save the court games, I think, because because of this happening. Yeah, so I think 
Arwell had already given up. So he's just going to sort of let this happen. I reckon. I was a nice guy, and I think he knows he's just dead regardless. But I think Adam is actually sequencing this wrong. Oh, he's just going to duel to the death of Gino. Uh, that, that's one of those other options. Uh, so he's still not breaking. And his supernatural storms are worth one less now. And actually, if his first action had been to storm the Agena, Agena would have been uh, 7 military strength, so uh, take 2 off, I guess, for the Indishonored. Would have been 5 military strength, so he could have actually faced down the Shoju. Uh, so now we're going to see some f military buffs on assassinatable characters. Uh, in a political conflict. So he bows the Inferno uh, Invoker Guard, so I assume he's got um, against the waves in hand. I actually think forgery works against and against the waves here. Uh, I think Arwell's actually got nothing in hand because he's just attaching fine katanas. Uh, so Shoju finally kills the scholar. Uh, yeah, Arwell's just playing out his hand here, is, is my guess. I reckon he's got nothing in hand. To use Isao Mari Saido. Uh, on Suki. Uh, Shoju kills off that dreamer. Uh, so what's our world got left? Uh, how many did die there? One, two, three. I guessed at three. Uh, so if he hasn't assassinate, then I was wrong. Uh, Adam lets the against the waves out. I guess he's got another for shame in hand. Um, yeah. Oh, so there's the assassination, so that's four of them. The question is, can he kill the last one? Seems my text is lagging. Uh, so use clarity. He used forgery on the clarity of purpose, which seems really bad. He could have used it on the stand. Because he actually doesn't want him to be able to bow, in theory, because of the for shame. Uh, oh, and there, uh, yeah. So compelling testimony, fiery madness. Uh, and castigated to kill off the last guy. So that was all five characters. Uh, and that's game to Adam, which means uh, Adam's going to advance on here to face uh, Steve McLeish's crab. Uh, and then I'm going to face a winner of that. Uh, I actually think I'd be okay against that scorpion deck if he's still playing that by the final. Uh, Steve McLeish I'm less uh, confident about. Uh, he beat me in Swiss. Well, it says he beat me in Swiss. I actually conceded that round, so I don't really know what would have happened. Uh, I thought that was the last round of Swiss, so I just conceded. And then we found out there was <laughs> six rounds of Swiss, so I had to go ahead and play again. Um, so it'd be good to actually play, but uh, Steve McLeish is undefeated, so Adam's got a hard job ahead of him. Uh, and then the final. Uh, hopefully Adam plays his next game 
before next Sunday so we can actually get the tournament out the way before the end of next week um, and the new season can start up soon. Uh, yeah, it was quite a fun game to watch. Um, interesting Scorpion deck, something a bit bit new, a bit, uh, bit different. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.